All right. Yeah. Thanks for coming, first of all. It's really cool to see you here today in Bratislava enjoying this wonderful conference. Today I'm going to talk to you about the journey from software development to building a community. Because so many great things in this world are difficult to do by ourselves, but achievable as a group. So let me start this talk with the following quote. No one can do everything, but everyone can do something. That reflects exactly the idea of this talk, meaning that we are not superheroes to take care of everything, but as a group we can actually pay some good attention to some little topic and make it great. At this point, the uh, speaker usually shows his qualifications, but for this talk, you do not need to be, or I do not have to be a super great coder. So I just happen to be involved in some communities listed here, and I'm going to share my thoughts and experience on this uh, great journey. So this talk is about people. It's not so much about tools. And even in tools, uh, we not often notice the human factor that is behind anything that we are using. Even this phrase, a uh, human factor, it has a negative meaning. It usually means like a mistake that a human could do. It never thinks about the human touch, the emotions, and enthusiasm that a human brings. And that is unfortunate. Like, let's even look on our daily tech routines, like something really small we never pay attention to. Um, installing Python packages. Like, when you do pip install, would you ever think about some person on another side of the internet doing work for this package? Well, hell no, I wouldn't at least. Well, maybe if there is a bug. If there is a bug, yeah, like, oh, this idiot again. <laughs> but normally we don't. So, and if we just want the them common to work, do we even care about these things? Well, the problem is that there are always real people about any, uh, uh, behind about any tool that we are using. And there is no code yielding machine that would just generate one commit after another perfectly. And obviously, yes, we have bugs uh, in our code because we are humans. But the Python universe, it uh, relies a lot on the enthusiasm of normal people just like ourselves. And unfortunately, the enthusiasm cannot power a serious big project for a long time. We're all humans again. We have other things to do. We have feelings. We do mistakes. We get bored as well. When our project gro grows up, uh, it's our responsibility also as a Python community to uh, find a way how can we power it in the long term. And then we have a couple of options. Uh, mature, projects, mature projects, they can be powered rather by throwing in them a bunch of money or creating a community around this project. Both would work. As you already guessed, today we talk about the second option, about building a community. And what's about community? Well, although cultivating a community is kind of embedded in our ancestral DNA, like in our modern day, we got away from this idea. We live this isolated, fractured lives uh, when we're in our office, in our apartment, or in our car. And with this privacy that we get, we are missing some beauty and some great experiences and power that the community can bring to our lives. Like, Right here, right now, are we already benefiting of having a community? Or are we already in some community in this room? Maybe a club of cats. Like, who likes cats? OK, some people. Uh, who likes dogs? So no, uh, a wrong guess. OK, well, no, obviously, it's about this conference. It's, uh, it's the conference that makes us a community, not the cat club, unfortunately. Uh, but we are enjoying it, and it is great, and I really love it here. But here, enjoying the, the benefits that community brings us, we cannot take it as granted, right? Because there are people who really invested lots of time to prepare this. And the least thing we can do for them, could we get some applause for the organizers of this conference, please? Well, it's, it's great, what can I say? It's really awesome. And this is that one of, the, of those points that I'm talking to you about that community can give us. Next, let's talk about what we can do to be a part of this. I'll talk about creating a community. And unfortunately, community is not something like a rain that can just start in the middle of the day out of nothing. We have to work on it. Yeah? So the good news is that creating a community is an exciting journey. And uh, 
I would like to start with a little story that we had in Munich. It's just a, a nice example of how things can be built up. So, you know, uh, I arrived to Munich like three years ago, and I didn't know the language or people, so I thought, hey, let's join some community and get to know everyone. Well, unfortunately, I didn't find what I was looking for. So, we talked together with some more expats, and we thought, like, it's probably not just our problem, it's probably a problem for more people, so if there is a gap, why don't we just fill this gap? It worked, and uh, now, uh, like a few years after, it's quite funny to think about that time. Who of you been on PyCon.de last year? Yeah, not much, but okay. So, well, now you know that PyCon Germany was organized mostly by people who did not know German. So, no excuse not to participate. It's really fun, and everyone can do this. Let me share some practical tips now about how can we get started. So start. We have our team, we have full enthusiasm. Well, this is lie, no, start is more like this. But it still works. It still works, yeah, I have to be honest with you. It's the, it, there are some challenges, but it still works. And even if you are just uh, together with your friends, discussing something and leaving the doors open for everyone, even that already counts. It's the start of the community. So you make some topic. You start a discussion, you leave the door open, people will join, it's just a question of time. Now, meetups, that's something that we are now very used to, and that's actually a very easy thing to do. So, the, mo the main challenge is to find speakers and attendees, obviously, and then there is a host who is also a sponsor, and the topic. Just talk to any uh, technical, in best case, Python company in your town, they will most likely agree to host you, and maybe they will even provide you some basic drinks or food or whatever, stuff like that. Well, if you have difficulty with finding speakers and topics, then there is also a shortcut. You can make a code retreat, and the code retreat is similar to Meetup and the workshop. It's uh, kind of a hackathon when you have the same topic every time. It's usually an uh, implementation of the game of life, the classical Conway's life, in a nice uh, test-driven development way. And this is kind of a cheat that you can use if you don't have speakers, and it's still very useful, and it gathers a community around you. Then, well, you need some website to share the links. And if Microsoft got away with this at the beginning, then probably you can also get away with something very basic. Like even a meetup group or Eventbrite page works perfectly fine. Then, as you guessed, the task is to uh, spread the word. So. You need to use all of the possible information channels that you have. Like, you need to talk to other companies, you need to talk to universities. Uh, use mailing lists or Twitter or social media or contact other communities directly to make people aware that you are doing something here in your town. The good thing is that since you're not really selling anything, people are usually eager to help, they're eager to share. They would most likely post these announcements on their community boards, uh, invite you to more mailing lists, so it's kind of this chain reaction that works in the community, and it's great. Now let's talk about the next level. If meetups are too boring for you, then of course there is conference. And the good news is that making a conference from the point of view of tasks, it is quite similar. Well, but I have also to be honest that it's the same tasks, but it, it's multiplied by 10. Like, if you need uh, to find one sponsor for a meetup, you'll need 10 for the conference. If you need three speakers from it, you'll need 30 for the conference. Organizer may be uh, like this dog at the end, but well, hey, we're talking here about the community, right? So as long as uh, you have a good crew, as long as the tasks are distributed, well, it's totally doable. I listed here the main topics, which are uh, each by itself uh, deserving a separate talk. I'm not going to uh, talk about those right now. I just want to show you, and if you have interest in any of those, please feel free to ask at the end of the talk, or um, just after the conference somewhere in the hall, I'll be happy to help as I can about those. Then, this list should be assigned very well to the crew, to the co-organizers, and as long as uh, this list is distributed in the right way, and it's healthy and in good shape, it should work. Now, first step, we're doing a conference, we're getting the crew. Well, 
the crew gets bigger, it gets smaller, sometimes it can be also like this, can be big like that. People, some people overestimate their free time or underestimate the effort, that's normal. And some people need time to believe in the idea that your community is sharing. So the crew will change, but as long as the responsibilities are well set, there is no problem in this. Then, think big. Even if you're just two, like you and your friend, even then, you're doing a serious thing, right? So you need to play like a serious organization. I'll give you an example so you understand it better. Like um, when uh, I've been approaching uh, one of the first sponsors for PyCon DE, uh, I went to their office uh, and I was discussing like a possibility. I thought, please, please, please sponsor this at least somehow. And then they told, well, okay, well, we could probably pick one of these top packages and give you N thousands, but we would like to have this and that perks. Like, would that be possible? Like in my, in my heart, I was like, yeah, it's done, it's done, it will be a success. But you can't do that, right? You are a big, serious organization, so you need to say something like, well, I'll discuss it with the board. <laughs> if I would have a dog, I could discuss it with the dog. Yeah, I don't, so. Just had to wait a couple of days and say, well, the board uh, decided to agree. Then the next success factor you already guessed, I think, obviously, it's cats. So we love cats and dogs, and it is ridiculously funny how deep in our souls are these little things. I give you an example, stickers. That's our stickers last year. We had a lot of them distributed everywhere and uh, one of the co-organizers ordered just for fun also uh, those stickers. Guess uh, which one was taken faster. <laughs> like there was just one coffee break and all of the cats were gone. <laughs> and PyCon, I still have those like in my keller somewhere. That is a laptop after PyCon, just a screenshot from Telegram group. So people do love it, and you can count uh, different types of stickers. Then, uh, going back to more boring things, what matters a lot is communication. Uh, how do you communicate with your audience and uh, with your sponsors and with the whole world? So uh, uh, we are often introverts, and uh, we're also living in the, in the technical, highly technical age when the modern means of communication, they mostly imply uh, text. Like we are sending emails, Telegram, WhatsApp, whatever. I am more comfortable like that, at least. Probably most of us. The bad news is that it drops your chances a lot of getting positive answers. Because when you are writing to uh, email to like a uh, sponsor, it could be like this. It mostly, in most of the cases, is like this. So you really need to break out of your comfort zone for this one. But the good thing is that, yeah, we don't like it, but it's also a nice skill to have, right? It's like to develop a, a good skill in yourself. Another example is that um, I was once uh, uh, flying, well, not in my dreams, uh, on the airplane. I had a flight, and my neighbor was doing some geeky stuff with his laptop. So I thought, well, it's a long flight. Why don't we talk? It turned out that he works in the company that uh, just offered by himself me a sponsorship. Like, hey, looks like a cool thing you're doing. Why don't we sponsor you guys? As easy as that. And then when uh, I talked with other co-organizers, it turned out that we had actually an email written to that company and they never replied it. So it's just a proof how one-to-one -one communication works. Then there is a difficult topic. A topic that we're usually trying to avoid. With meetups, we can still get away without talking about money. With conferences, we can't. Essentially, conference is kind of a business. You have a real expenses, a real costs. You need a financial plan that you need to follow. Otherwise, you can fail very hard. But, well, grown-ups, they do talk about money. And we're all grown-ups, so let's just have a minute about this. Would be cool to also see your opinion. Like, who thinks that um, a community work is, by definition, non-profit? Oh, nobody. That's surprising. 
Okay, uh, then a more tricky one. Um, should volunteers get paid? It's difficult. Well, it's also difficult uh, for uh, organizers to decide because there are two sides of the story, obviously. So uh, one side of the story is that uh, every community, any community, it begins with volunteering. And if you use volunteering of others to make profit for yourself, you are a total douchebag. Like, don't do that. People will notice it anyway. And finally, like we are software developers. Freelancing is much more profitable than organizing a conference, believe me. So this is a totally bad idea to make profit on the conference. On another side, money is something that is uh, rising people's responsibility. By giving someone uh, a promise or like a salary, even some ridiculous amount of money, this person becomes much more responsible. And that is just how things work in our society. Like when we get paid, we feel that we need to give something back. When it's just volunteering, we will help as well, but only after do our main things done, something like that. Well, it's up to each of us to decide how do you build your uh, community and how do you uh, motivate people to do the uh, tasks in your community. But the thing is, I just want to uh, uh, like show you an overview that there is no point to be afraid of money or talk about money. This is the essential part of the conference. And although we, at least, our conference is not such a profitable conference to, to afford this, but I see nothing bad in it. Like, if you can uh, make your conference better by investing money in services, in uh, travel costs of uh, others, feel free to do it if you feel like it. There is uh, totally no point in avoiding this talk. And I would like to share with you uh, some basic costs that is good to know before you do doing an event. This is, of course, just our example. It works in a similar way for most of the conferences, but doesn't mean that it's always like that. That although conferences always have like a lot of sponsors, usually, uh, it does not mean that that cover everything. Like for us, at least, most of the income still comes from tickets. So again, like uh, giving free tickets to everyone can just make a conference fail. So just make sure that your budget is well planned because uh, these are the things that at the end uh, make your conference a success. And then about the costs, it's also a good thing to know that at least for us and for many conferences, half of the cost is only the catering. This is just a little kind of introductory talk in organizing events and managing a community. But the good thing is that we're all uh, Python friends, and when you're in doubt, you can just ask others. You can ask other communities, co-organizers, well, we didn't have any experience at all, so we talked a lot with PyCon Italy, they're super friendly guys, and they helped to plan a lot. Don't get scared of the difficulties that are there. Be optimistic, because at the end, community really appreciates the effort that you put. Would it be a conference, or would it be just a meetup of three people? Even that three people, they will be really happy to have it. So if you can make something, even something little, think about it. It's, it's actually quite cool. And even sometimes we have uh, challenges when planning these events, these meetups. Like community, they, they help you. When you have tasks that you forgot about, it's actually even fun to do when you're not alone, when you have people with you. Or when you're missing something, uh, on your events. Like, I totally did not know how to manage sprints. And I realized it during sprints, not before sprints. What happened is one guy just stood up from the crowd and told, hey, I did it on another conference one day. Why I just don't take a lead of this one? Perfect. That works. And finally, community forgives. Even if you screw up, which is not uh, necessarily the case, but even if there are little things that you missed, when you do it from your heart, community can see it. And little things are just forgiven. So show some love, do things with passion, do things uh, uh, in the way that others uh, will see that this is 
an event, uh, a little contribution from you to the Python universe. And when you do it with love, your effort will be highly appreciated. And that's it. Now let's continue with questions. Thank you so much. Uh, the most upvoted question was, you still have the PyCon stickers? Where can we get them? And how about the cat stickers? <laughs> <laughs> well, cat stickers are super easy. Uh, cat stickers, uh, we just, I think we ordered it somewhere from China, from eBay. So if, if you just look on eBay for cats, you'll have it. <laughs> Alternatively, you can come to Munich. Just uh, I, I didn't want to advertise uh, the, con the next conference we're doing during this talk, but I will do it on the lightning talk. So we will do more events, obviously, and you will have uh, other stickers there too. And this time we will make sure not to fail with cat stickers. There will be hell bunch of cat stickers and dogs too. So. So if you want a sticker, you need to travel to Munich. OK. <laughs> Thank you. Marketing. Uh, <laughs> next one. Diversity, diversity matters. How, do, how to make sure it's built in uh, to a community from the start? Would you repeat again, please? Yeah. Diversity matters. Uh, how do you make this diversity happen, basically, from the Very start? Very good question. How much time we have? <laughs> About three hours. Yeah. Well. <laughs> This topic is uh, almost as difficult as money, to be honest. So there is a lot of controversy regarding this. Everyone knows that diversity matters, but everyone also understands diversity in his own way. Uh, let's start with something simple. Um, any community, any healthy community should have um, minorities or uh, kind of a, a group uh, clusters that represent um, different parts of our society. I have to say that uh, it's not easy to force someone from a social group that you do not have direct connect connection to to participate in your community or to come to your event. That is an effort. You need to have, in the best case, uh, one of the co-organizers working on this or do it yourself, but that takes time and it takes effort. Then about the misunderstanding about the diversity. Like diversity, it does not mean that you just uh, have to have a balance between like uh, straight people and gay people in your conference. It makes no sense. It means that the more people of different backgrounds you invite, the more people of different age, profession, religion, color, whatever you invite, the cooler will be probably the mixture. So you should not just focus on, okay, um, we need a gay speaker or something like that. That's, that's okay, but that does not really matter that much if you will have N people or N plus one people like that. What matters a lot is to have a representations in one room of people of different backgrounds. That is really great. The problem is to reach those people. And again, you're not uh, like uh, doing a call for papers and calling your speakers or asking, OK, but uh, are you maybe black? So then you have higher chances to get in. This is also not nice, right? So there is a lot of, uh, a lot of um, difficulties to address the right people to make this mixture work. But if you invest time in that, it will work. And uh, finally, Many people judge uh, conferences on being uh, like not diverse enough. They do not think that uh, like call for papers, it's open for everyone, right? Everyone can apply. I am personally really sad that this year our submissions, they mostly come from men, like 95% are men of my age. That is boring, but what can I do? Like I encourage highly everyone to submit talks, but it does not mean that you have to go to some special club and say, hey, I'm doing Python, so please join us on these talks. So it's tricky and there is no solution. It, I cannot say in just one phrase, phrase a perfect uh, uh, solution to this problem. The best thing you can do is just to reach out as many people as you can and um, try to find the right balance. Thank you. How are tech communities different in different countries? And what struck you the most when you came to Munich? 
Well, there are always stereotypes about countries, and that's quite often true. Communities matter not so much depending on the country, but depending on the topic. And we are very lucky to have the Python community because it's kind of international. At the beginning, I was afraid that doing PyCon TE will not get enough of international attention because of DE, so uh, uh, German language. But it still did. So fortunately, uh, we Python people, we are somehow very united. And you can also see it on this conference, that we have people from totally different countries and from different backgrounds. It's great. While front-end conference, they are more commercial. If you look, for example, on ticket prices for front-end conference, they're at least double as expensive as uh, Python conferences are. So that community is, uh, I wouldn't say not friendly, but um, that community is uh, more difficult to uh, invite to work uh, as a volunteer on some uh, cool event together. So I would say differences in Python communities between countries are not so high, but there are big differences in kinds of communities, like that would be a front-end JavaScript designer community or a Python community. That varies a lot. Another one is not really a question, it's a comment saying, I started to program in Python just because the community is so awesome. So I just want to thank you. Yeah, I would also, would like to thank you too. Guys, I think that we should be all thankful to each other because this community that we are having is great. Again, we can do things that are impossible to achieve by individuals. Most of the Python projects are powered uh, like that. And uh, just remembering this, and if you have a little opportunity to contribute to the community, would it be a meetup or would it be a pull request? Doesn't matter. It's just cool if we all uh, remember that our Python universe is very much community driven. Be thankful to people who uh, invest their time in this. I think that Python will conquer the earth. <laughs> Another one is a little more serious. Community for gifts. What about the sponsors? Yeah, community is a business for sponsors. So when I was already saying that for the uh, uh, when I was talking about the money, that uh, conference is a business essentially because you are selling stuff and you're buying stuff. So obviously sponsors uh, see uh, conference and community events as a business opportunity to advertise. That is totally fair and this is totally normal because at the end it's uh, also our mutual interests. Like we do not want the py uh, Python language to be locked just in the universities and in small enthusiast research groups. If we want Python to be really popular, companies should use it. So involving companies in community, even if they look on it more from the business perspective, is totally okay, to my opinion. So yes, uh, the relation between company, sponsor, and community is more of a business relation. So you promise the very specific things that you can give them, recruiting, advertisement, promotion, and so on. And you have to fulfill those, obviously. On another side, uh, like if you are afraid that you might fail at some points, uh, remember that even companies are still humans. And uh, if you have difficulties with uh, one of the things that you communicated in the beginning and you need to change it now, you can probably just talk to the company and um, discuss the fair replacement of that. Most likely there will be a good replacement that will satisfy both parties. And uh, this way the community only benefits. So yeah, the companies, uh, they will forgive you too if you uh, find some uh, good solution to the problem. Do you think having a sponsor is really essential for a meetup? Aren't you afraid of a meetup domination by one company? How do you handle that? Very good question. Yes, so uh, the meetup can be also hosted, for example, uh, at the university. Yeah? It's uh, the easiest case. The university will most likely provide you a room for free where you can just meet up with your friends after work, discuss about Python. That works like that in many cities, including Munich. Uh, that is uh, the way that you can totally avoid any sponsors at all, even though actually in this case the university is your sponsor. It's just not interested in uh, commercial uh, activities with you, but they are still sponsoring you with the room. 
but you should not be afraid so much uh, of the companies too, because as I already said, at the end, we Python developers, we are interested a lot in uh, spreading Python, also in businesses. So, uh, and um, how do we rise uh, the trust for Python as a reliable platform and programming language? The more companies are using Python, the more reliable it seems to other companies. And when one company is hosting a Python meetup, it kind of says like, yeah, we support Python, we use it, and we have a Python meetup. And that is essentially a good thing, because uh, probably some other company that is choosing the platform right now will see it, maybe even go to that meetup and think, hey, if they're using Python, why don't we use that too? It seems like a good tool in our city. We have developers, we have community. Let's just use it. So to me, it seems like a good thing. But of course, uh, there could be extreme cases. If there is just one Python player at your city and uh, it wants to take the control of your community, well, then you as the organizer have to balance it. If you balance it right, meaning that the meetups are still meetups and not just advertisement of that one company, then it's okay. But yes, you are right uh, that you need to balance it. You need to really pay attention that the meetups are meetups, not selling stuff. Can we do one more question? Of course. All right. Uh, how do you keep the engagement inside the community or organizers? Yeah, that's also a good uh, question. So, um, well, first, said many times, but I will say it again. Python community is friendly. We are used to help each other. That's true. That's already something that makes things easier to start. Uh, then, when you have high responsibilities into doing something and you see that there are already real people that rely on you, somehow we are, uh, we are thinking more that, okay, now if, if there are 100 of people that already bought tickets, they are counting on me. I cannot screw up this one. So the more involved you are in the community, the more promises you make, and your team, obviously, the more responsibility uh, they usually get with this. So uh, promises are rising the responsibility. But you need to be very clear with the promises and the responsibilities since beginning. So when someone joins your team and says like, uh, I don't have much time, but maybe I can help you out on Saturdays with something really small, that most likely will not work because you need to understand that that's a real commitment and it's a real time and effort. So to make this uh, better, you need to give the right responsibility right away. You, you should ask like, what would you like to do? Go over that list that I have there. Like, would you like to talk to maybe to, to speakers or to companies or to media to do PR? But you need to put a responsibility on each of your crew. And then when they feel this responsibility, when they realize that if they don't do it, it will fail, then it's a good way to uh, rise uh, their commitment in the community. But in general case, it is still a problem. So. Yes, we're all humans, and sometimes we just simply don't have time to do something. So it's up to the organizer to uh, balance it right. Thank you so much, Anton. OK, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks for doing this conference. Please say thank you to volunteers here around, because remember that community does not start by itself. So these people are really doing this work here, and that's real work. So thank you, guys.